the owner and the chef of one of the oldest Indian restaurants in San Francisco. Their family-owned business was the subject of the Oscar-nominated documentary Abacus. She's a seventh grader in Northern California. Bon Giovanni. <laughs> no, not bon even. Giovanni. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> I was always proud of like being an Asian American. So I grew up in an area of Los Angeles that was pretty much 100% white. You'd be called like Gandhi or a dot head. Sometimes we have to leave home to find our true home. Racism has been around for a very long time, especially um, xenophobia against the API community, but COVID has really um, sort of amplified these kinds of things. Are a lot of more like microaggressions. Bringing the Kung flu or the Chinese virus. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to say something or they're going to think that it's okay to push you around like that. Consider your the environment you're in and doing different things that are not typically kind of Asian American, for example, becoming an astronaut. We should have talked to each other. We should have sing to each other instead of uh, yowling to each other. Oh. My little attempt at a tongue poem here, uh, taken from Tian Hao Jiang, which is, let us stop shouting at each other and start singing to each other. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> we are all on the same team. We may all look different, and maybe originally we came from different places, but we're all here for the same goal, and it's to make this country a better place for all of us. I believe you can enjoy so much delicious texture when you're more, more inclusive than trying to be too exclusive. And it makes your life rich in every flavor and deliciousness you can think of. We hope you are enjoying dinner. That was a showcase of an original content series that we launched with our CEO, Kevin Rudd. It's part of our global task force called Asian Americans Building America. And every other week, staff from our global centers come together and talk about ways to move the needle. We've interviewed chefs, the first Asian American rabbi, astronauts, authors, and opera singers. We have a number of them with us in the room tonight. If you guys could raise your hand when I call your name, Mina Fedor. She is a Berkeley middle schooler, a Time Kid of the Year finalist, and the founder of AA Youth Rising. She is our future. Next to her is Ashlyn So, a next gen fashion designer. She launched a line at New York Fashion Week. And she is fighting for AAPI history to be taught in schools. Chef Ranjan. <laughs> Chef Ranjan, where are you in the room? He's of New Delhi, one of the longest standing Indian restaurants in San Francisco. <laughs> and we have Chef George Chen of China Live. I haven't seen him yet tonight. Where is he? Is he here? He's going to be doing a cooking program with us, and that's going to be in AAPI Heritage Month in May. You can check out our website for the 31 ways to celebrate AAPI Heritage Month in May. If any of you want to become a member or join any of these programs, you can check out page 34 in your program where you can sign up for a membership, or you can see Angela at the auction and membership table over there. And we do have books, Kevin Rudd's books, available for folks here too. Now, to share more about the tangible results and making change, we are pleased to have with us California State Senator Dave Min, whose flight made it in time. He has been working so hard to pass legislation on protecting women on transit systems, harassment in large businesses, and he has helped fund Stop the Hate organizations in California. Please, let's give the stage to Senator Dave Min. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, uh, my name is Dave Min. I was elected in the 2020 election cycle. Uh, I have the privilege of representing most of Orange County, Irvine, Newport Beach, Huntington Beach. And I encourage you all to come down because it's an amazing place to visit. And we have excellent Asian food. I don't know if it quite matches up to what you have out here. Um, now, believe it or not, uh, when upon my election, I became only the second Korean American ever to serve in the state Senate, and the first in over 40 years. So, uh, if you ever, uh, thank you. 
If you don't know who Alfred Song is, please look him up. He served in the 60s and 70s. He was uh, way ahead of his time, and, and uh, he was the first Korean American. Uh, you also might not believe that um, there are currently only two Asian Americans serving in the Senate, uh, myself and Dr. Richard Pan. And unfortunately, Dr. Pan will term out this year, meaning that it is very possible I may be the only member of 40 in the state Senate next year. Uh, and so obviously representation matters. We've had some great representation out of San Francisco that has done amazing things. And I want to give a shout out to David Chu, uh, Phil Ting, uh, Rob Bonta. Uh, our Bay Area representatives have been people that have been amazing. <clears throat> And of course, as you know, Rob Bonta now serves as our Attorney General. David Chu serves as your city attorney here in San Francisco. Uh, but I think all of us were surprised by the rapid and uh, unfortunately far too ubiquitous presence of Asi Asian hate, anti-Asian hate. Uh, and I think those of us who are Asian Americans, I think, were surprised by just the vitriol, the breadth of what we saw, because uh, I think we thought that this was different. Uh, for, as someone who was born in this country, who, who grew up here, uh, I know that I kind of felt like we have Asian CEOs, we have Asian business people, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have uh, maybe not enough politicians, although nobody ever really says we don't have enough politicians. Uh, we have athletes, uh, Chloe Kim, we saw some uh, you know, great people in the Olympics this year. Uh, and I think we wanted to feel like we were immunized, and yet uh, that was not the case. And so in the API Legislative Caucus, uh, where I'm a proud member, uh, we are privileged to try to come up with those solutions, trying to lead on this. Now, I'll be honest, when I was running in 2020, uh, running against Asian hate was not an issue that was at the forefront of my agenda. Uh, but being the only Asian American to serve in the state Senate out of Southern California meant I had to take on that obligation, not just for Asian Americans in my district, but really across California. And so I was really proud to work with my colleagues uh, on passing the historic API equity budget, which you all know about, uh, $156 million to combat Asian hate. <laughs> and that money is being distributed as we speak in the form of different grants, uh, well, $110 million for victim service and prevention, uh, $30 million for grants to nonprofit and community-based organizations, uh, $10 million to ethnic media, which I think is, is really, really important these days, uh, as well as research to UC Riverside and other places. Uh, and the way I look at anti-Asian hate in our efforts, uh, we have two tasks ahead of us. In the short run, what we have to do is, is to stop the, the sort of rise of this. We have to make it unacceptable for people to voice or act on anti-Asian sentiments. In the same ways that hate, unfortunately, is on the rise right now, uh, we have to make it socially unacceptable. So that we need to stand up and we need our allies in this room and around uh, this state to stand up with us in condemning anti-Asian hate uh, because we need to make sure that nobody feels comfortable expressing those sentiments in public. But in the longer run, and this is what the API equity budget is meant to do, we have the task, and, and this is a much harder task, uh, of trying to educate, to outreach. Uh, I think we need to, uh, those of us who are Asian American, we realize that we need to build those bridges with other communities because we can't be alone. And, and I want to you know, give a shout out again to all those communities, whether it's Jewish, Arab American, uh, the Black Caucus, uh, Latinos who stood with us because we have, we need your allyship. We, we need you to stand with us right now. Uh, but in the long run, we need to build those bridges so that they're permanent, to educate, uh, so that people recognize the importance of Asian Americans, our value, that we belong here, this is our country, uh, and, and there's no appropriate place for hate. Uh, now, I wanted to mention really briefly before I finished um, the, the bill that I'm introducing this year, uh, SB 1161, which was mentioned earlier, is in partnership with Stop API Hate. And I want to also thank Russell Jung, who the co-founder of uh, Stop API Hate. Where are you, Russell? Nice, nice to see you. Uh, for uh, helping us introduce this. Now, this bill would require the 10 largest transit agencies in the state to start collecting data, gender-specific data, uh, developing a gender action plan, uh, and as well as uh, harassment of, of people based on their race or ethnicity. Uh, and if this piece of legislation is passed, what it will do is give us the data to start addressing street harassment. It also requires those tran 10 transit agencies to then uh, develop solutions to try to deal with the problem of street harassment. No one should feel unsafe when they're in public, when they're out on the streets, when they're using public transit. And unfortunately, that is far too often the case. And too much of this is driven uh, by racism, by sexism, and that's just unacceptable. 
Uh, so thank you so much for having me today. Uh, thanks for all you do to support our community and uh, congratulations again on this.